Hi, and uh, well, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Um, my day job, I'm a, I do elder law at uh, Myrick O'Connell. Um, and uh, this is not about my day job, however, it's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center and seen my presentations, you know that <laughs> Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Ashland, they live in Ashland, they don't want to move. And so the point of this show is to help them and you, if you're like them, figure out how to deal with staying at home, uh, in, in specifically staying in Ashland, but over the last recent months, staying at home, and then um, staying at home for the rest of your lives. Mm -hmm. So I have a wonderful guest who actually was uh, from Ashland until he migrated to Southboro a number of years ago. Yeah. Um, and who's, is it your mother? Does your mother still live in Ashland? No, she doesn't anymore no she did for a long time though did for a long time so so um this is doug peck whom we have had on um in the past doug um i i'm a big fan of doug and the and the the uh the entity that he works with it's called friend it's called seniors helping seniors and it's a it's a it's a home care organization that is dedicated specifically um to having the home care workers who are or, or people who are helping seniors be seniors themselves and so um, I invited him on because, because I, you know, he is right now kind of uniquely situated or qualified to talk about what people are going through at home, what they have been going through over the last, you know, several months mm -hmm. and how they're dealing right now. Because, you know, five months ago, we all thought we were about to die. You know, now most of us have kind of, people have adjusted to the new reality. It's, if you're not a senior, you probably are not worried at all. If you are a senior, you kind of are worried because you know no one else is worried. So, so um, I wanted to have Doug talk about kind of what he what his folks are going through. Um, and but Doug, can you just give a little bit of background once again? So how, you know what is seniors helping seniors? What's the concept? What do you do? And mm -hmm. then I'd like you to just you know t from there talk about how what you do has changed both from the perspective of your employees. And by the way, this is not a no, nonprofit volunteer organization. These people have seniors, our employees, right? From the perspective of your employees and also from the perspective of the people that you're helping. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you for having me on. It's nice to be back in Ashland, so to speak, virtually. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very interesting concept where, again, you were right, all of our caregivers are seniors themselves. So what we look for when we hire people are not people necessarily with caregiving experience, but people who are, have what we call the heart of a volunteer. They, they still have a concern about their community. They have a concern about the people in their community and they, they want to remain active. They know that that is very important for their mental and physical health to stay active. So, our clients are also seniors, and we do a, a many different things for them, but we don't do nursing care it's, or personal care. It's really a, the other type of uh, care that people need when they're at home, and oftentimes home alone. Now, they may have a daughter or a son that stops in and visits them and, and checks in on them, but still they're spending a lot of time home alone. And that in itself, particularly nowadays with COVID, is not really good. That, that type of isolation uh, leads to loneliness, which really leads to depression in a lot of people. We are social animals. So we try to bring together the, the, the two seniors who are often not that far apart in age uh, to, to be able to have conversation, to play games, to reminisce, to take them out shopping, to help them with some easy chores around the house. Do a, you know, it's always nice to go out for a walk with somebody. Because we, you know, if you want to go out for a walk, if I want to go out for a walk, it's no fun to go out and walk a half hour by yourself. It's much nicer to go out and walk with somebody that you can chat along the way to. So, you know, uh, the time goes a lot quicker and it just feels a lot better to do that. The same with having just lunch during the day, you know, to be able to sit at your kitchen table and have someone to talk to, uh, make you lunch and talk to them while you're having lunch. It really makes a really big difference. 
uh, because everybody has concerns, everybody is anxious, and to be able to talk to somebody about them who really understands what you're talking about because they are facing the same issues is, is really a very healthy thing to be able to do. And that's what I always loved about the organization, you know, this, this notion that you're taught, you'll be, you'll be dealing with somebody that, you know, you kind of come from the same time period, you know, the right. same music, you have a lot of the same kind of cultural background, mm -hmm. and you're going through a lot of these things. You're going through this period of life, like, you know, Doug, you know, you and I have talked about this. I mean, I just turned 70, you know, mm -hmm. you're going through this period of life where people are, you know, getting frail, dying, you know, and everyone's got these anxieties. So it's just, it, it, I thought it was a great, a great concept. So can you talk a little bit about, for, for your folks, how, have, how has everyone dealt with this? Mm -hmm. You know, starting when the bad things happened. I, this all happened for me. Right. We, were out, we, were, we were heading out to a trip to Arizona to visit friends and we, we came back and it was locked down. It was yeah. in the middle of March and it's been astonishing ever since. It has been, it's been a long six months for folks. It really has. And, you know, we, we were on a journey. We are, we probably have as a company, the oldest workforce <laughs> of any company, uh, you know, in, in Massachusetts, our average age is about 70 for our workers. And so we're looking for some slightly younger ones right now, but many of them were very afraid. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't have the, the personal protection equipment, you know, because we were never using it. It was hard to get. Um, we had, people had no idea how the disease was transmitted, et cetera. But we have a lot more knowledge now. We have guidelines to follow from the CDC. So we have people that are our employees that are going back to work, mostly into people's homes, uh, because we are following all the guidelines. We have been very successful in not having anybody uh, that's worked for us uh, get COVID at all. Um, we wear masks. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing in this nicer weather is that while we're still seeing people, we often see them outside, you know, either on their deck, in their front yard, in their backyard, where we can sit outside with masks, talk to, you know, six feet apart, which really when you're sitting down, isn't that far apart, be able to talk with them, be able to spend time with them. And it's been a huge benefit to both people because our employees are anxious to get out there and to be with other people as well. You know, they, they missed seeing their clients. So we do, we do that. Um, the clients that we do see, we do a very thorough interview with them and the families so we know who's been in, what their situation is, uh, et cetera. So it's not like we're walking into some place or walking into a home where we don't know what's been going on the last few months. We know what's been going on the last few months. The same is now even in assisted livings where we're going into. Um, everybody has to report on how many cases there have been. Uh, I not only do uh, you know more on the management side, I'm also a caregiver. And I've been into some assisted living, seeing clients that I've had for five or six years, but I know the facilities have been COVID free for six to eight weeks. So knowing that means that the person there is COVID free. We still wear masks. I take him out to, uh, in this case, it's a man. I take him out to a dentist or to get new eyeglasses and sits in the back seat. We both wear masks in the car to be on the safe side. We, I sanitize everything when he, when he come, before he comes in and when he gets out. So it's a very safe place to be, but I know he really looks forward to uh, A, getting out, and B, have, just having someone to talk to for a few hours uh, and sort of get back to what was normal before, what we all took for granted. But now it's really a big deal to be able to see somebody in person, chat with them for an hour or two, uh, maybe stop at a McDonald's and get a frap or get something to uh, get something to eat and just, you know, be sort of normal for a change. It's a big deal. And it, and it, but it works, you know. And, and I think you, you actually, in the course of that, answered one of the questions that I had, which was, so 
at this point, you're also you're not just going to people's homes; you're also taking them out. So, because that's I would think that is an important piece of 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 this kind of of what service you're providing is for a, for a, for a lot of clients. You know that, right. that mm -hmm. who I have, they're really homebound. Right. You know, they don't have a car. Right. They're mm -hmm. not. They're not for. They they don't feel safe driving a car at this point. You know, mm -hmm. and, and um and so but. In, in the typical, you know, we're at, we're in the burbs, right? So right. in the typical place, if you don't have a car, there's a whole bunch of places that you just can't get to unless there is somebody else. So to be able, yes. to, so to, be able to have that service is a big deal. So can you, yeah. can you speak to that, that issue of over those months, mm -hmm. can, you, can you just kind of talk about how people, the people that you're visiting, how their life has changed, how their perception has changed over that time and kind of where people what your sense is of where people are now. And then maybe we can talk a little bit about where you think that's going. Mm -hmm. right. I think the people have, um, we've seen people who have really sort of withdrawn a little bit. You know, they're, this uh, COVID has made people very anxious and, and early on afraid of other people because they didn't know what those other people were sort of bringing into their home. And they didn't know how it's going to impact them. So we are beginning to see people now realizing that it's, it's time to op open up a little bit. It's a time to return to doing some of the things that they actually need to do. I mean, if you listen to the doctors right now, they are telling us, don't, you know, if you've got an ache or a pain or you need to see a doctor, go. I've been to a number of doctor's offices. I've been to my own dentist. They are very, very concerned about keeping people very, very safe. So this gentleman I took out, he had needed an emergency dental work and he had been putting it off. And finally, we were able to go see a dentist, much to his relief. He broke his glasses, take him out and got new glasses, which again, you can't ignore these things. Uh, but so when you have somebody though, who is going to watch out for you, uh, knows what all the, the right protocols are, um, you know, really makes you feel a lot safer that you're going to feel safe in the car. They're going to, they're going to help you. I mean, it's perfectly fine for our people to help people by holding their arm, keeping them steady, helping them getting in and out of the, in and out of the car. Uh, and then, you know, staying with them the whole time and making sure where they go is safe as well. So and I would, I would think that in terms of specifically, you've talked about the, you know, the, like the doctors and dentists mm -hmm. office, but I'm thinking, especially the doctors, I would think that if you are a senior and you are sick, right. Or you're worried that, that, and, and, and if your, if your son or daughter, or there's a relative, is not around to accompany you. Right. It must be a wonderful, it kind of a, almost a relief to have a second set of ears that are hearing what the doctor is saying. And I'm thinking, especially now, that a lot of those those doctor visits have become virtual. Yes. I would I would think that if I'm in if I'm just in my house and talking to the doctor mm -hmm. on a on a Zoom call, and I may have a lot of trouble even figuring out how to do a Zoom, you know. Right meeting and stuff. Right. And by the way, this, so this includes me. You know, we've done a lot of these Zoom meetings, but I'm, I'm every one I open and I'm, I, am, mm -hmm. I am petrified that something's going to go wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. so, for, so for people who are going through this, it might be, must be great to have that, the, somebody else there who can hear. And, 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 and by the way, I'm just going to mention to folks, that is increasingly true also if you've got a medical appointment and you want a nurse there. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've work with, uh, there's a wonderful geriatric care manager in, in, here in our area. Um, oh, what is her name? Uh, Rebecca Wild Wesley and her mm -hmm. partner, Sharon Burke, who's actually from Ashland. Sarah. And, yeah. and I've, I've found that it, in dealing with these folks, increasingly, they're, 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 they're both, they're nurses, right? Or nurses or, 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 or social workers, that they're wanting uh, or their clients are wanting them to be in the house, you know, to, to be there for these for these th these Zoom calls with the doctor, so that they can really be, you know, talking to the doctor. And I know in the case of the of the um, this one geriatric care manager I work with, she actually 
is there to kind of take the lady's temperature and do the stuff that the doctor would otherwise mm -hmm. be doing if the, the patient were in the office, you know? Right. So I just, to folks who are listening, there, there are people there who, who can help you do this. You know, yes. this isn't, you're not kind of alone in all of this stuff, right? Right. And, 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 and once again, these are oftentimes you have to pay for these services, mm -hmm. right? But it's worth it in terms of making sure that you're staying healthy. You know, that's kind of the. Absolutely. You know, that's so important. And, and care managers right now, I think, are more important than ever. Uh, we, again, are not doctors or nurses, but I have, I have been in many doctor's appointments with my clients, uh, simply taking the notes uh, and oftentimes even beforehand sitting down with the, the person and saying, now, what questions do you have? Because I'm mean, even I've walked into a doctor's office, my own doctors, and you know, with five or six questions I want to ask, and I forget the last two or three because we get talking about something else. And so this way, you can you can say, you know, oh Martha, you you also wanted to ask him about, you know, X. And so uh, it's you know, if you're going to go and make all that effort, even if they're going, even if it's virtually you don't want to waste your time because you're not going to get to see that or talk to that doctor again for another few weeks. So, you know, you might as well get the best information you can have it written down. So you remember it when one of your family members calls and says, okay, mom, so how did the doctor's visit go? <laughs> right. Did you ask him these questions? What was his right. answer? Right. You're not you don't want to be, stupid you don't want oh, to be I saying, that. right. I don't oh, I forgot remember, that. or right. he, she said everything was okay, which is not at all what the doctor is going to say. Right. So, so I, one of the reasons I wanted you on is that I also wanted you to be able to, to make your pitch to other se seniors who might be interested in doing this work. Because I yeah. know that one of the things we talked, you've talked to me about was the fact that a lot of the seniors, because they were kind of nervous about going in, you know, that, that mm -hmm. there've been, you haven't had You've had a lot of folks who, who need the help, a lot of clients, but sometimes not enough of, you know, of seniors to help the other seniors. Mm -hmm. So could, could you just, and, and I think that's really important right now because there are so many people at home right. who have been, had been volunteering, had been volunteering at the, at the senior center, you know, right. had been volunteering you know, in other you know, mm -hmm. entities in town and have been, and so that's been more limited now. So they may, may be really looking for something to do. And this is a case where they can actually earn some money Absolutely. doing something that's really useful. So can mm -hmm. you just kind of talk about, you know, go back to, you know, who are the people who are typically, you know, with you and what does that look like if they're doing this kind of work? Is mm -hmm. this, is this 40 hours a week? Is this traveling to Boston? Is it, right. you know, kind of, kind of what is this, what is this mm -hmm. all about? Okay. So we, we cover the communities from Metro West, that is, you know, Marlboro, Hudson, Southboro, Westboro, Ashland, uh, Sherbin, all, right, right into Boston. So yeah. we have a lot of local clients, and we try to keep people as local as possible. Most of our folks uh, probably work somewhere between six to eight hours a week. Mm -hmm. They generally have one client that they go see. So they're not going into new homes and new situations all the time. They're establishing a relationship with that one uh, person. And we'll do, you know, so they're going back maybe twice a week. Our typical shifts are three to four hours at a time. Um, what we are finding is that people that were having us over for two hours now want us for three hours at a time sometimes four, they want us there longer because it's been so long that, they, that they've seen people, you know, <laughs> they want that little extra accompaniment. Uh, right. So it still might be like a Tuesday and a Thursday that we're there. Um, we work on weekends, we work, you know, you know uh, but we, we really adjust our schedule to fit what you, the people that are looking for. Um, it, it is a job. We do, it's a W-2 job, which means taxes get taken out, gets direct deposited. It's really very simple. We have a big payroll company that we deal with. Um, and it's people from all walks of life, people that generally have not thought of themselves as caregivers in the past, both men and women. Matter of fact, the last two people that we hired were both men. Um, and we have a, a number of men clients 
Uh, oftentimes they're veterans. They like to talk about uh, their, their time in the service. So we're looking for other veterans who are always, you know, who are also very giving type of folks that want to get out there. Uh, and we try to keep them very close to the community. It's a job that they will, often they come back to us and say, this is the best thing I could have done. It's the best thing for me. I really feel good of myself having helped somebody. It, it, you know, it's, you know, it's a kind of a cliche to say there's no such thing as a small act of kindness, but it, it really is true. People are really so appreciative of you spending what for a senior is their most valuable resource, time with them, with somebody else, giving the time, sharing ideas, sharing memories, uh, and just even just listening to people complain sometimes. They can't, you know, the families have heard it all before. They've heard all the stories. They've heard the complaining. Have somebody new to talk to about it. It's a whole different thing when you're with someone who is really like a friendly neighbor rather than just a son or daughter who is, who is there and has to, you know, has to you know, help out, uh, but doesn't have the same kind of listening ability just because they're, they're involved in a million other things. I was just going to say that son and daughter's got all this other stuff to do. Right. They're trying to figure out how in the world to deal with their three kids that are doing virtual learning and all this other stuff, you know? Right. And so they're, so I think for a lot of the, the parents, or for a lot of the kids that had been checking in regularly with their parents, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, ironically, now their kids are, those kids, their kids are home, right? right? Or, or a lot they're home. And so it's, it's hard you know, that classic, you know, daughter of yours who's got these three kids, you know, just right. can't be checking in as much because she's got her kids, you know? I mean, I find, we find the same thing. You know, we talk to our kids. We've got one mm -hmm. who, has a, who has a son, right? We have the other two, you know, we don't have a lot of grandchildren. You know, that cliche I've told you, you know, it, it's like nobody has kids now. They all have dogs, you know, so <laughs> really dog. Right. But for the one who's got a kid, you know, we're watching it. Right. And of course, she's buried with the child, you know? And so, you have to accept that fact as the parent, mm -hmm. you know, that you, you know, you need, and, and, and what, once again, what I loved about, what I love about seniors helping seniors is that specifically regarding COVID, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, we're in this together. We are in this, the seniors need to be helping the other seniors. Absolutely. Because the others have got these other, you know, got a lot that they got to do, you know, and seniors are going to be more, are going to be uniquely concerned about. Wash your hands, check for the mask, do all of this other stuff. Just the kind of stuff that if I were a senior at home, mm -hmm. I would be worried about. I'd be, you know, I'd, I'd want somebody there, right? right. Who, had, who had exactly those kinds of concerns. Absolutely. And I can't tell you how many uh, emails and letters we get from families, you know, uh, saying that, you know, uh, so-and-so really turned out to be mom's best friend. Because when you think about it, oftentimes, even if they're living in the same house, the whole neighborhood has changed. All their neighbors that they knew for 50 years are now gone, one place or another. And now this new person coming in, who, who they're going to see on a regular basis for, for three or four hours a day, you know, maybe once or twice or even three times a week, really does become their best friend. Uh, and it's such a blessing for the family to have mom now have a best friend. Mom likes it because there is somebody that she can really talk to. And, you know, if she is nervous about um, having a cataract operation, for example, or even just going to see the doctor, so many of our clients have been through the same thing. I can't tell you how much, you know, right. uh, where I had one that uh, the client was going to go in for hip surgery and the person I was bringing in had it two years ago and could tell her all about it and say, no, no, it's not that bad. It was this part of recovery, et cetera. But that really calms people down to, to really have somebody, not just a doctor or the, a daughter or son who is so busy doing other things, be able to listen to them uh, and have some good responses because they've been through it themselves. They've been through it. So, so folks, once again, the reason why I wanted you know, Doug to, to, to be on the show was, I think, you know, their, their folks, yeah, and by the way, we'll also have, we're, you know, we'll ask the folks from, from uh, Ashland Cable to put up the contact information so that you can get back and, 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 reach, and reach Doug mm -hmm. if you need him. If you need seniors helping seniors, this may not be for you, 
-hmm. But if you are a senior who who wants to be doing this kind of work, I know Doug has often talked right. about, they're often, you know, they're retired teachers and social workers and people, nurses, but also just folks who didn't do that, but just had yes. this kind of sense of, this would be a, you know, a good thing, just a good thing to be doing as a compassionate mm -hmm. person. If you're interested, you should be talking to them because, because you are helping your, our, us, you're helping all of us, the kind of class right. of seniors. And if you're a senior and you're saying to yourself, oh, I don't, you know, this is going to be a lot of money and I don't think I need this and stuff. All I would say is, great, try it, right? right? Just have the conversation and decide whether it's right for you. Because, you know, you're mm -hmm. signing on. You're not signing a lifetime contract here. You There's know, no contract. <laughs> you're just seeing, you're deciding right. to see if this would be worthwhile for you. And if yeah. it would be, and if it's not, it's not, you know, right. but, but that's the point. That's the point. Don't say, don't, don't just say no to it. If you, if you think, you know, that you're kind of stuck in the house, there are things you can't do that, you know, that you really need to do and your kids are unavailable because they're all stressed. Think about this. Okay. So Doug, thank you very much for doing this. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Folks, thank you for watching. Um, and I'll look forward to seeing you. I know my, my, my friend, Steve Mitchell, who could not make it today, uh, will be back for the next show and we'll see you on the next installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Thanks, Arthur. Thank you.